হ্যালো রোজা আপু কেমন আছেন বেশি ভালো নাই ভাইয়া কারণ আমার বাসায় সবার ফ্লু হইছে আচ্ছা গতকালকে আমরা কত পর্যন্ত পড়ছিলাম পঁচিশ না থার্টি ডিগনি <laughs> attacks over the past four of four months his exercise tolerance has uh, reduced from uh, two miles on the flat is to only 100 meters he claims they are stairs only once per day medication includes pill 5 milligram daily blood pressure 165 by 110 85 regular pulse uh, has crackles at the lung base consistent with the left ventricular failure and ejection systole systolic murmur loudest in the aortic area so investigation here hemoglobin 13.2 white cell platelet sodium potassium creatinine slightly raised echocardiogram 55 millimeter gradient across the aortic bulb and severe uh, stenosis no sign of ventricular dysfunction okay so which of the following is the definitive intervention balloon valvoplasty decoxine frosemide ac inhibitor and last one transcatheter aortic valve implantation last ta one out the last ta because um, a patient er ektu exercise tolerance uh, left heart failure ache abar hmm eta to boyosh beshi hmm আর হচ্ছে গ্রেডিয়েন্ট তো 55 আমরা তো জানি যে 50 ইয়ে সো বেড়ে গেছে আর কি গ্রেডিয়েন্টটাও আর কি ইনক্রিজ হ্যাঁ কে কে তো বেশি তার হুম ডেফিনিটলি ইন্টারভেনশন কারণ বয়সও তো বেশি তাই না সার্জারি তো করা যাবে না আমি সিম্পটোমেটিক پیشنট ইজ সিম্পটোমেটিক যে সারা দিনে সে একবার সিঁড়ি দিয়ে ওঠানামা করে বেশি করতে পারে না আর 100 মিটারে হচ্ছে নেমে আসছে আর কি ওরই হ্যাঁ সেটাই মানে <laughs> percent at 5 years mm -hmm. reported survival for the trans aortic um, uh, balloon implantation is 60 to 80 percent at the at the at one you know, at one years mm -hmm. with one to two percent patient undergoing the procedure requiring immediate cardiac surgery for complications the majority of the patient treated report a significant improvement in their quality of life তার মানে যেগুলো বলছেন আপনি ওইটাই তাই না তার পেশেন্টে একটু বেশি তার এক্সারসাইজ টলারেন্স ক্ষমতা কো একটু বেশি না সেই জন্য আমরা হচ্ছে ওপেন হার্টে না গিয়ে জাস্ট হচ্ছে ট্রান্স থোরাসি একটা দিয়ে আসব কেন আচ্ছা সকালবেলাও একটা পাস মেডিসিনের এরকম একটা क्वेश्चन ছিল আমি অবশ্য একদম লাস্টে জয়েন করেছিলাম একটা क्वेश्चन দেখতেছিলাম এরকম ছিল আচ্ছা আর ভালভোপ্লাস্টি ইজ হচ্ছে রিভার্সড অথবা ফর پیشنট হু হু আর আনফিট ফর সার্জারি Uh, or uh, transaortic bulb uh, implantation benefits are limited with the deterioration in the symptoms occurring 6 to 12 month after the procedure it is used in infant while it is followed at a later is by the definitive surgical intervention okay drug gula to ekhon dibo 
Okay, next is Shyamra. So, what would you advise her? Ki advice dibo? Agi amra porani question ta. A twenty-eight year old woman with adrenal insufficiency called to the endocrinology unit, saying that she has become unwell with a respiratory infection over the past twelve hours. Current symptoms include cough, sore throat, and intermittent fever. She wants to know by how much she could increase her hydrocortisone dose. Is 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50
idiopathic Parkinson's disease, Liu body, normal pressure, frontotemporal, progressive supranuclear palsy. A 72 year old man comes to the neurology clinic for review. She has suffered several falls over the past few months, and his wife has noted a significant deterioration in her way. Uh, he is walking. Uh, in her way, he is walking. He has hypertension, and but otherwise, no significant past medical illness. Uh, you note the stiff broad based gait, and he, uh, he he talks to the clinic uh, with the knees and uh, the trunk extend, extended. He has obvious bradykinesia with micro, micrographia. Tremor is not particularly marked. Rigid is more marked in the shoulder and neck versus distal muscle. Ex examination of us eye muscle reveals a limitation of the vertical gaze. The eye involvement as you note marked postural hypotension when he stands up from the examination uh, coach. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Tale Parkinson plus what's it? I am vertical gaze. Vertical gaze problem. Yeah, PSP. PSP. PSP, right. So 34, uh, what is the mode of action of heart failure of BiPAP in this setting? The key mode of action. So decrease left ventricular afterload, uh, decrease left ventricular contractility, increase systemic vascular resistance, increase left ventricular afterload, and to increase right ventricular preload. It's afterload comma. Decrease left ventricular. Decrease left ventricular afterload. Hmm. A, I think. Okay, we read the question. Now. Uh, 72 year old man is admitted ED with acute uh, decompensated left ventricular failure. Mm -hmm. He has failed to respond adequately to the GTN infusion and bolus intravenous prosimide. Uh, BP raised and pulse 100 regular. There are bi bilateral crackles throughout the lung field and oscillation consisted with heart failure. Hemoglobin, WBC platelet, sodium, potassium, creatine raised. Uh, so you decide to commence the bilabel positive airway pressure for this heart failure. Okay. Decrease left ventricular after load. Okay. So BiPAP is thought to be decrease the need of uh, intubation and improves the shortness of breath, uh, hypercapnia and acidosis and heart rate. So it is thought to decrease the systemic venous return and uh, left ventricular afterload. This is decrease systemic venous return and left ventricular afterload. Hence, reducing the left ventricular feeling pressure and limiting the pulmonary edema. Yes, the key could is the decrease systemic venous return and the lab ventricular afterload. Hence, reducing the lab ventricular feeding pressure, reducing the lab ventricular feeding pressure and limiting the pulmonary edema. BiPAP or continuous CPAP is usually de de deployed as a therapy in patients with the cardiac failure who fail to respond to the conventional intervention such as GTN infusion or prosimide. Acha bypap are kader ki amra di. Ekta to chha heart failure. Ekta hoche je COPD patient jokhon hoche ki acute exacerbation hai. Ebang tokhon hoche jodi oder carbon dioxide onik beshi hoye jai. Tokhon hoche ki mani metabolic acidosis sorry respiratory acidosis jokhon develop kore felle. Tokhon oder ki hoche bypap di ta hai. Tanya amra kani? Aara se ki dui dui jo na ki aara se. Aar we give in the Oh, mm -hmm. are you talking about the bipap? Or the CPAP? 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 Mane exercise tolerance is a good bit of 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 a good
पलिसमोग्राफी कर in case of central ha okay. central bypass obstructive sleep apnea cpap cpap hmm i others others indication of cpap hmm. acute, acute respiratory distress syndrome okay acute respiratory oh acha ha in ards we can't give na bypass we have to intubate the patient ha intubation korte hoy oh, mane cpap ta je orkom dai or amon damage further what will damage thank you to so, sleep up shudhu tale ekta pelam obstructive sleep apnea mainly hmm. ekhane use kore sleep ap hmm. okay so 35 so which of the following is the most appropriate next step hmm, next step uh, iv vitamin k oral activated charcoal oral methium methionin is restart infusion at 150 mg over the 1 hour restart the infusion at 50 mg per kilo over 4 hours So, a 19-year-old woman has been uh, started on an infusion of an acetal system 15 minutes earlier for a staggered paracetamol overdose of 35 milligram in the preceding 24 hours. She has been vomiting, and you are asked to see her how uh, to see her because she has developed hypotension and tachycardia, blood pressure 19, 60, and 95, and regular. She also complains shortness of breath and auscultation of her chest reveals the mild wheeze. So she is given intravenous fluid, hydrocortisone and chlorpheniramine, and her symptoms settle. So which of the following is the most appropriate next step? So vitamin K, charcoal, oral methionine. No, uh, no, no. It is a neck uh, infusion uh, causing problem. Yeah. So if there is any problem. Yeah, decrease the dose. You have to reset this one. There is no other way. You slowly, can... we have to give slowly, na? No? Slowly, yes. So, which one is answer? Restart to infusion fifty milligram over four hours. Well, it is actual dose time. I mean, just should it is Jani. Je hote if any yes. kind of anaphylactic shock or something problem with this uh, in acetal system then you have to like wait and decrease the dose That's no no de- don't decrease the dose i think it is increase the duration we have increase the duration yeah don't decrease the dose okay i don't know how much it will take uh, the but duration you have to prolong the duration don't decrease like slowly the dose. slowly infusion yeah, slowly, slowly, slowly infusion yeah so 4 hours na ki Let's see. Mm, four hours. Anaphylactic anaphylactic reaction are common in patient given IV and acetal system, and symptoms can usually be controlled by stopping the initial infusion by treating with the glucocorticosteroids and antihistamine, and then restart at the mid range infusion rate, fifty milligram per kilo over four hours. So this is the point. Eh? 
মিড রেঞ্জে শুরু করতে হবে তাহলে আগে কতটুকু করে শুরু করছি আমি এটা জানি না এই যে দেখো নিচেই লেখা আছে রাদার দেন দা লোয়েস্ট রেট 100 মিলিগ্রাম সিডি like 150 mg over 1 hour it is too much, much. Yeah, i mean too much and that we have we are giving quickly we have yeah. to study. we have to give slowly slowly yeah. just read the e uh, the, the yeah, option d okay the given this oh, yeah. patient has already suffered anaphylactic reaction at the higher infusion rate mm-hmm. continue at the 150 mg per kg rate risk significant symptoms of hypotension and dyspnea hypotension so progression of anaphylactic reaction has, has rarely been described including some uh, fatal fatalities but they didn't slowly you have to get okay. there is no okay. other option like if anaphylactic shock with an acetyl cysteine you have to stop no there is no chance to stop this drug yeah we have to have wait to... treat and then again you have to start yeah but they said here the control by mm-hmm. stopping the initial infusion ha eta i ar ki prothomei hocche stop kore oi je anaphylactic shock jehetu hoyeche so corticosteroid antihistamine othoba ki জল এখানে ইন্টারভেন so which of the following is the most appropriate next intervention as it from as a therapy i go tinip i brought i brought tinip i did a lisip and prednisolone rituximab okay so a 74 year old woman with cll is admitted to ed with rapidly worsening shortness of breath and decreased excess tolerance so but the past two weeks she received blood transfusion some two weeks earlier and is known to suffer from hemolytic anemia as a result of her cll so hemoglobin 5.1 wbc uh, 18.9 platelet uh, slightly reduced and sodium potassium a little bit high creatine 123 
So who which of the following is the most appropriate next intervention? Prednisolone. Prednisolone. Yeah, this is autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Autoimmune anemia in CLL, you have to give uh, prednisolone. Prednisolone, yes. Because the... And what are other management uh, for the autoimmune not associated with CLL? Um, autoimmune... Yes, it depends upon yeah. like uh, what's the underlying cause of this uh, hemolytic anemia. Okay. I think so. Okay. So, 5 to 10% of patients with the CLL, the most patients with the autoimmune hemolytic anemia respond to the high dose prednisolone. Although this, of course, comes with the own adverse event profile. In patients who do not respond to the prednisolone, both rituximab and splenectomy, this is the point. Uh, rituximab uh, and splenectomy are the potential intervention. Risk of hemolytic anemia is thought to be increased in patient to, uh, patients treated with the purine analogs therapy. Purine analogs therapy delay risk of hemolysis. Body. So then hotel rituximab and splenectomy. <laughs> So, albinism. Thank you. Mm. So, which of the following is the most likely cause of the skin change seen here? Alopecia areata, lichen planus, pteriasis rosa, pteriasis versicular, vitiligo. Tell to vitiligo, I think. Vitiligo, right. Mm. Around Why the... not pteriasis versicular? Huh? Pteriasis versicular usually occurs on the back and trunk. Usually, uh, pteriasis versicolor usually uh, present in the back. Uh, mm -hmm. Like is the then I have to read the, <laughs> like, read the like, scenario. Like, if yeah. this patient is go to in beach area and then there is present is itchy, flaky. Uh, Hello. Yeah. yeah. Your voice is breaking. I. My voice. I heard it clearly. Okay. Okay. My voice is uh, yeah. Okay, both the pain I mean, if pterias is versicular, it's a fungal infection, right? So, it's a patient that's in the beach type area, in sunny area. After that, there is a depigmentation and itchy, and there is a flaky, um, scaling hierarchy. মানে চামড়া উঠে যাওয়া যেটাকে সহজ বাংলা ভাষায় বলে যে ওরকম একটা ফিচার থাকে যদি হচ্ছে পিটারিয়াসিস ভার্সিকুলার হয় আর পিটারিয়াসিস রোজিওসা এটা তো সবাই জানে একটা প্রথমে হেরাল প্যাচ হবে ওটার প্যারালালি আরো বেশি হচ্ছে রোজ কালার টাইপের হচ্ছে আরো ডিপিগমেন্টেশন হবে both uh, two are quite similar like yeah. the and, uh, that yeah, beautiful. but uh, if uh, the question is uh, like a good question, then they are saying uh, this patient have a one uh, one depigmented area first, then after two to three days, uh, there is more rash. Yeah, that is what the This is different. Yeah, yeah this is the yeah. difference. So we can, what then we can um, differentiate. Please say again. Again? Acha. No. Pterias is versicolor, is, this one is the fungal infection, right? So mm -hmm. in question, there, there may be a scenario like the people are going to the beach or they are some exposed area, then uh, they, they have each different color of the rash. Versicolor, um, that means I uh, memorize this way, variety of color of this, uh, uh, the rashes. And... Okay. Uh, so they are itchy and flaky, like a flaky, scaly, uh, like, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> they are type one diabetes, is also, I think, then it is okay. autoimmune condition. Autoimmune condition, and your depigmentation uh, affecting his face and neck, uh, with new area now appearing on his arms and upper chest. He also has a white patch or air hairs and show in this picture so the club so i'm going to go to the 
39. So a 62 year old man is reviewed uh, before discharge following a third admission with a non uh, ST elevation MI over the past six months. His atorvastatin is increased to 80 milligram and you plan to follow him up uh, in the clinic in six weeks. So which of the following lipid parameters would you prompt in initiations for uh, proportion, uh, convertes, subtilizes, lysines, and uh, caxin types 9. This means PS, PCSK9 inhibitor at follow up. So, hmm, so, hmm, so, diagnosis of impaired glucose tolerance, no, load in L LDL cholesterol 3.5. Seven millimeter liter TG two point one three G eight point nine high density cholesterol point nine millimole per liter. Mm. Is it uh, with trans? HDL might be hmm? because PCSK nine inhibitor is the increase the HDL level. HDL level. Hmm? Okay. I mean, not it. No, no, no. no. You think the triglyceride 8.9? But uh, no, no, no. It is mainly acting on the cholesterol part. Okay. 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 Like it uh, decreases the uh, cholesterol part. Mm -hmm. Okay, to read for it. So nice uh, the guidelines on the lipid management. As uh, given here, this patient has a third uh, non ST elevated MI. In the past six months, he would be classified as a being being at very high risk. He is already treated with the maximal intensity statin therapy, meaning that if this LDL cholesterol is above three point five. Treat with the P PCSK9 inhibitor is indicated. Both elirocumab and ebolocumab. This is elirocumab and ebolocumab are available option. They works by the preventing degradation of the hepatic LDL receptor. Degradation hey, prevent by degradation of hepatic LDL receptor leading to fall in plasma LDL cholesterol level. Tarmani LDL receptor of the liver. So, periphery thick LDL gula ki dhuja liver jama rakte. Mm -hmm. Yeah, prevent the, uh, it will prevent the degradation of LDL receptor mainly. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, two ta aliru kumap and hote ibalu. Kumap. Aliru and ibalu. Lulu. 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 So, 40. Mm -hmm. Which of. Which of the following is the most appropriate next step for blood glucose control? Okay, read the question first. Uh, a 59 year old man comes to the diabetic clinic for review. She, he has type two diabetes for which he takes metformin and dapagliflozin. Type two diabetes, so metformin, dapagliflozin. Uh, he has hypertension and has suffered a previous anterior myocardial infraction. Other medications of note include bisoprolol, remipril, rosobostatin, clopidogrel, and aspirin. Blood pressure 122 by 82, pulse 70 regular. There is minor pitting edema affecting both ankles, and his chest is clear and body mass index 34. Hemoglobin, WBC, platelet, sodium, potassium, creatinine, hemoglobin, HbA1c, 61. Mm -hmm. So here is ejection fraction 36. Which of the following is the most appropriate next step for blood glucose control? Add uh, uh, dulaglutide, add uh, glycazide, add insulin glycine, add insulin lispro, add pioglitazone. So all already patient getting dapa dapa hmm. dapa oh, okay hmm. okay and the patient has uh, too much body mass index yes. so we have to uh, yes. add not insulin dulaglutide hmm. i think we can't add glycine and pyogrytazone and hmm. insulin and lispro both can cause uh, weight gain weight gain yeah yeah this is glp2 one hmm. Hmm. So, glucose, yeah. weight, weight loss, it causes weight loss. Mm -hmm. 
So patient has type or type two diabetes with uh, just have optimal glycemic control is obvious and she has mild cardiac failure with reduced ejection fraction. In this situation, GLP-1 agonist uh, will control the blood sugar uh, and have the modest effect on weight, uh, to which has been shown in clinical trials to reduce the ischemic cardiovascular event. And dula, uh, dula glutide is therefore the optimal next step in managing his diabetes. Although the triple therapy with metformin glycogate bioglutazone is recommended by the NICE, uh, there, uh, there are reasons uh, here not to consider in this option. Hmm. Because what? Failure as is so five liters on the dark question. And yeah. one thing, uh, there's no necessary to like uh, here BMI is less than 35, but we are starting here. Because hmm? patient already getting. Uh, DAPA gliflogen. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Of mm -hmm. insulin. So insulin we cannot start because patient weight is high. Mm. Yeah. Also, ejection fraction also reduced. Mm -hmm. Thirty. What is that? Chilo. Thirty-one. Next question. Which of the following is the most appropriate next step? So. Mm, fresh frozen plasma, IV pentoprazole, IV tarlipressin, vitamin K, urgent upper GI endoscopy. Okay. Here, T, APTT is ray, APTT, okay. Normal. Putumbintem, okay. Uh, intravenous IV fluid commenced, okay. A 73 year old man is admitted to the ED following an acute upper uh, gastrointestinal hemorrhage uh, where he vomited 150 to 200 ml of fresh blood. According to his wife, she has been passing black motion for the past 48 hours. Uh, she has apparently been taking to uh, 12 uh, milligram, 1200 milligram uh, ibuprofen per day over the past two weeks because of pain in his left knee and has almost constant indigestion. So he is drowsy and confused, complaining of epigastric tenderness, abdominal palpation. His blood pressure 90, 60, and 110 uh, regular. Melana is noted on the rectal examination. Hemoglobin combination 9.7, white cell platelet, sodium, potassium, creatinine. Oh, creatinine is raised 231. Urea also raised 14.5. Prothombin time okay, APTT okay. So IV fluid replacement is commenced. So which of the phone is the most appropriate step? IV fresh from the plasma, IV pentoplasma, tarlipressin, vitamin K, urgent, upper J, endoscopy. Okay, this patient is not done the endoscopy, right? Endoscopy, because okay. hemoglobin is uh, decreased. So, mm. uh, we have to first sort out uh, this one is uh, very similar or... Not very thorough, but I think look, I have to go for endoscopy because we have to look at the, any active yeah. bleeding going on or not. Not, yeah. There's right. like IV fluid is started. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yes. and, yeah. After that, we can go for the other thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because so, if we man give the blood. And then we wait, like uh, it is causing more harm, like uh, mm -hmm. undergoing bleeding is going on. Mm -hmm. yes. So this patient is elderly, uh, with sign of large upper GI hemorrhage, the most likely underlying cause given the recent history of full dose ibuprofen use. Peptic ulcer disease, urgent endoscopy allow for the identification of the ulcer and offer the potential for injection uh, with adrenaline yes in the event that active bleeding is identified right hmm. so which of the phone is the most likely cause of a rash rash so ankylostomata paracelinesis ankylostomata canium borrelia brachydophere dermatitis artifacta and strongyloides to uh, osteoarthritis was steady okay so a 23 year old woman comes to the ed with erythematous raised to rash affecting her abdomen and both lower limbs it is itchy and has progressed slowly over the past few days she has recently returned from one month trekking holiday uh, to Central America. Full blood count checked by the GP and revealed the elevated eosinophil count. She, the rash is shown below. 
and calistomata ha uh, cutaneous uh, yeah so ha yeah, cutaneous type ki sobe tale calistoma canis or canis ha yeah. ami sure na kintu <laughs> डायरिया they can okay. always say like let's go to the option b only in kylostoma canium because it is causes the brazilian the rashes constitute the cutaneous larva migrants eglo always bhul kori eglo pari mone thake na mani jo ei jonno hocche oi especially infectious disease brazilian is causes लीडिंग Uh, the leading uh, track may reveal the larva within the burrow and surrounding inflammation most case result within 4 to 8 weeks uh, although it heavy infiltration in heavy infiltration use of anti helminthics may be useful to shorten the course of disease and relieve itching acha baki gula ki bolche so as it is caused by the cutaneous larva migrants although it is a much rarer case of infection in comparison to ab infection is primarily by the australia acha as it is australia ha ar amra jeta je strongly westeri hocche is cause of cutaneous larva migrant although infection is much more rarely seen versus ab primarily host acha uh, host for the ws infection is the in the horse horse related kore thake the time code both are similar na hmm both are cutaneous larva migrants look uh, one thing i have uh, remember in one discussion we discussed that like one is slowly progressing uh, that uh, in kylos in kylosoma slowly progressing and uh, that is some like it let's see that is uh, it is quite rapid one it moves very fast Which one? The strongolitis. Yes, yes. strongolitis one. Like here, given a history of one month, it is slowly growing. Okay. Go to the main part, main stem. They are saying. That's mm. why I, I was confused. Look, uh, here in the last, she has recently returned from one month trekking holiday to central. Oh no, mm. no, no, not it. It is a itchy and has a progress slowly. Over the past few days, it is slowly progressing, and in strongolitis, it is very rapid, rapid moving. That's why it is causes like asthma, like wheeze symptoms when we uh, rush to the lung. Mm -hmm. Right. That's why I confused because both are similar for me. Mm. <laughs> so, A B Brazil is common. Okay, Brazil okay. Argentina is common. So, it is. Uh, Amra more like. Uh. A patient who is South America, like the history of this. Mm -hmm. America, take it right. Brazil, take it. Yeah. Okay, who, um, which, which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Eh? Cortico, cortico basal syndrome, um, MSA, and NPH, um, post subarachnoid hemorrhage, adequate obstruction, and IIH. Okay. Uh, 
So at 72 year old man presents to the uh, emergency medical tech with headache, short of short term memory loss, gait disturbance, uh, problems with incontinence of urine, uh, which have increased over the past few days, weeks. He has uh, hypertension and suffered from an inter intracerebral hemorrhage a years ago. Hypertension and intracerebral hemorrhage a years ago, although he is otherwise well. So blood pressure 148 by 89 and no postural drop. So MSA bath and pulse 74 per minute regular fundoscopy bilateral papillary edema, mini mental state with 18 out of 30. MRI brain, enlarged lateral and third ventricle and normal size fourth ventricle. That means obstruction as it is. Cortico basal syndrome, no multi system atrophy, normal pressure hydrocephalus, post subarachnoid hemorrhage, uh, equiduct obstruction. It is a good option. IIH. No. NPH or the NPH NPH this one NPH NPH like memory loss ataxia and incontinence but he has history of a subarachnoid hemorrhage yeah uh, that's it there here the enlarged lateral and third ventricle normal size of fourth ventricle that that means uh something wrong here equiduct equiduct on the equiduct okay mm -hmm. for Very this good. reason uh the patient develop other symptoms like hypertension you know, suffered and that's why hemorrhage a year ago okay okay let's see yeah. yes yes so obstruction of the sylvian aqueduct between the third and fourth ventricle is recognized as a long-term consequence, consequence of subarachnoid hemorrhage. It is likely to occur because of chronic inflammation uh, caused by blood in the ventricular space and feeds with the picture here ventricular dilatation affecting the lateral and third ventricle, but uh, with a normal sized fourth ventricle. Mm. <laughs> So, uh, 144, a 19 year old uh, woman comes to the clinic for review, having completed uh, treatment of Hoskin lymphoma and uh, wants to discuss her future prognosis. She has uh, she had stage two disease and required extensive supradiaphragmatic radiotherapy and chemotherapy. So, which of the four is the most risk uh, of this respect to secondary cancer? The Lakunta hobe breast cancer, breast cancer possibility patient. So, she has skin. Eh? Uh, supra supra diaphragmatic radiotherapy and especially from the radiotherapy. Okay, <laughs> radiotherapy is not good, no. At the most recent large data set on the secondary cancer risk post Hoskin lymphoma therapy comes for the uh, Swedish family cancer project. This established that the uh, standardized in incidence ratio for a second cancer, uh, the second cancer in the Hoskin survivor is 2.39. The greatest contribution to an increased risk include non Hoskin lymphoma. The greatest contributors to an increased Risk include non Hoskin lymphoma, 16.2% of excess risk. Lung cancer, 14.5%. Apu lung cancer, to one koi. Breast cancer. If you have an option, then I don't know. I keep money with thoracic oil region, a shop to take hoche, um, hote pari. Elmond hoche, a lung, breast, regular incident. I'm ready to chronology, non Hoskin touch about repair, repair, put the partner, 60. Increased risk of breast cancer, which is associated to inversely with the age of age at treatment or persistently uh, for up to 20 to 25 years after therapy. Achha. Okay. 45. Uh, which of the following is the most appropriate intervention? You are asked to see a 47 year old homeless man who is recovering on the orthopedic ward 24 hours after the admission for forearm fracture sustained from uh, falling while the intoxicated. He is known to drink uh, a bottle of whiskey per day. Alcoholic, not the devil. 
He is hypertensive with a blood pressure 155 by 85, mm, pulse 92 regular. He is uh, tremulous and sweating. He is very hesitant and believes uh, to, uh, to people are coming to hospital to harm him and uh, that he has insect uh, crawling on his skin. But, uh, he will accept medication from the from you. you uh, which of the four is the most appropriate intervention? Chlorodiazepoxide, fomipazole, hello Peridol, propranol, and vitamin B co strong. The number two, diazepam tapi to the attack it. Then it to tactile hallucination develop course. Why not chlorodiazepoxide? Set a dito be diazepam natal chlorodiazepoxide dito be. Yeah, this is a lot of hallucination. Delirium, Martin. Delirium. Delirium plus hallucination. This patient <laughs> has delirium treatments, uh, potentially as a result of no access to alcohol since he's, he's in uh, his hospital admission because of the fracture. Hey, fracture is the fracture. Chlorodiazepoxide is the intervention of choice with 50 mg as the recommended initial dose and giving the repeated dose to control the hesitation up to dose 300 mg per day. Which of the following drugs is the most likely cause of his constipation? It is a problem. The glycoside, indepamide, metformin, metformin, so uh, last one. No? Verapamil. Verapamil. Acha, <laughs> <laughs> which artery is most likely to have been occluded in this patient? This Italian right to Chovita deki, Kunta occluded who say. And a numbering for this order, eh? Tale occlusion air, which have a is is given. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. F, F, yes, a 54 year old man with diabetes mellitus present with chest pain and uh, has ST elevation affecting his uh, leads B3 and B4. So, consistent with an acute myocardial infection. So, B3, B4 means uh, that means lateral. Uh, yeah, lateral or left. This one, no? Left and anterior descending. Huh? Center. Anterior descending, center. yes. Mm. So five, five number. Yeah, left and artery five is the left anterior descending artery, yes. Mm. So which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Central diabetes, insipitus, and nephrogenic, polyprimary, polydipsia, uh, RTA type four, and CR. Okay, so a 20, 28 year old uh, woman comes to the clinic complaining of polyuria, polydipsia. She tells you that uh, she increased her fluid intake for health reasons, but she now feels uh, unable to reduce it to below five liters uh, of water per day. She has previously suffered from anxiety and she works uh, three times per night to pass urine. Find too difficult to concentrate uh, on, her uh, on her job as a solicitor because she is constantly busy seeing uh, toilets. Physical examination including blood pressure, entirely normal, body mass index 23. So here uh, hemoglobin okay, WBC platelet, sodium, potassium okay, creatine okay, glucose 6.8. So which of the phone is the most likely diagnosis? So uh, the cranial diabetes insipitus, nephrogenic, primary, RTA4 and is it primary? Yes, primary psychological. Yeah. Yeah. Other things are normal. Yeah. Mm, yes. Mm. Like, mm. Four or five liter. How, how can she drink? Mm. Okay, 49. Uh, which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Alcoholic cirrhosis, autoimmune, uh, <laughs> used PVC, PSC. Okay. So here, okay, we know antibody. A 33 year old man who has uh, ulcerative colitis comes to the clinic for review. Although his bowel, di uh, bowel disease is suitable, stable on uh, regular mesalazine therapy. That means uh, 
uh, ulcerative colitis present. He mm -hmm. has begun to feel increasingly tired over the past few months and feels that uh, this ap appetite is uh, decreasing. So physical exam examination is unremarkable. Here hemoglobin okay, WPC, platelet, sodium, potassium, creatine okay. AST raised 141 and ALT raised 133. Okay. Mm -hmm. ALP 285, albumin, okay, mm, uh, normal, bilirubin 17. So, which of the poly is the most yes. likely diagnosis? So, PLC, yes, PLC. Uh, which of the following is the most appropriate intervention for his now uh, of his malaria? Most appropriate plasma falciparum is identified, okay. Falciparum is identified. Okay. So a 22-year-old student admitted to ED from his accommodation having suffered a generalized seizure. That means uh, cerebral malaria. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Returned from the teaching SS assignment in Africa two days earlier and according to his uh, housemate. Okay. We go for treatment. So we give usually artisanal IB. Right. Does paracetamia look at paracetamia? Eleven percent. Oh, ten percent. Ten percent. So, mm, above ten percent, we usually do that uh, transfusion. Yeah, plasma exchange. Exchange transfusion. Exchange transfusion. Yeah. yeah, but here but is no no, no, option. no option in here. So artisanal, but uh, the uh, the patient number of features suggestive of the severe falciparum malaria, including seizure, metabolic acidosis, hypoglycemia, parasitemia, more than ten percent. Taken other uh, together, these are the pointer uh, supporting the use of artisanal regime of our treatment. Although the duration is uh, is not licensed in the uh, in UK, it is available uh, on a named uh, to patient basis. Uh, it is given intravenously uh, at 12 and 24 hours then daily. It used as an alternative to quinine um, for severe malaria is now supported by the um, cohort meta-analysis. <laughs> 51. So, um, which, which of the following is the most important intervention? So, most important intervention here, ECG show bradycardia and with premature ventricular contraction. 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 Here, uh, potassium 6.1 and, and, and pH, okay. So, a 64-year-old uh, woman is admitted to the ED following a large overdose of digoxin tablet, large overdose. She collected her mother's prescription from her GP and took the whole supply with a glass of wine. Uh, you understand from her friends that she has been depressed following the death of her husband. On arrival, blood pressure 90-60 and pulse 30-38. Uh, she has bilateral by basal crackles consistent with heart failure. So... Um, Dizzy bind, uh, fragment. Yeah, tab fragment, right? Yes. For the development of yes. uh, so patients slow uh, to atrial fibrillation, hypotension, hyperkalemia as a result uh, of other uh, her digoxin overdose. Although her potassium level is elevated, conventional treatment are usually uh, to work because of inhibition of the sodium potassium ATPS pump by the digoxin. Uh, reversal of the digoxin effect with fab fragments will not only improve her heart and blood pressure, but it will also lead to rapid fall in the serum potassium level. That means heart rate and blood pressure is increased, also potassium level decreased. Uh, 10 vials of FAB fragment is a usual starting dose. Each one binds around 50 milligram of digoxin. 10 vials, that means one, one, one vial binds 50 milligram of digoxin. I Mm. Okay, anyone can read. Okay, I can read for a while. Sure. Okay, which of the following is the most appropriate initial intervention? Azathioprine, uh, cyclosporine, cyclophosphamide, prednisone. Last one. Last one is. Uh, Rituxiban. Uh, mm. ESR is high, CK high. 
creatinine, uh, potassium, uh, sodium platelet, uh, WBC, hemoglobin. Uh, these are normal. Mm -hmm. A 42 year old woman is referred to rheumatology clinic with a gradually progress, uh, progressive proximal muscle weakness. She now has problem getting up uh, of a low chair, climbing uh, the stair and uh, reaching up, uh, comb her hair. Uh, also of note is that she has been uh, coughing and choking occasionally after eating. And there was a varying degree of pain affecting the shoulder and hips. Blood pressure is 135 by 85. Um, her pulse 72 regular. And he, she has obvious uh, proximal muscle weakness, mild tenderness over, uh, over her shoulders. Okay. Tendon reflex are normal. Mm -hmm. uh, evolution. Diagnosis. So we can so give prednisolone, yes. Initial intervention. Mm. This patient's uh, clinical feature is proximal muscle weakness, a significant elevated CK, le CK level. Fluctuating muscle pain is uh, co uh, consistent with uh, myositis. High dose corticosteroid are the intervention of choice, and they can be tapered with improvement of symptom or with the addition of uh, steroid sparing antigen such as azathioprine. In patients who do not uh, respond adequately to corticosteroid, a conventional uh, immunosuppression drug, rituximab, is the usual biological uh, of choice. Usual biological of choice. Okay. Which of the following is the most appropriate next step in her treatment? Activated charcoal hemodialysis uh, intravenous 0.9% um, sodium chloride, sodium uh, polystyrene uh, sulfonate, or last bit again. Whole bowel irrigation. Irrigation, okay. Whole bowel uh, irrigation. I irrigation. Okay, lithium uh, level is 3.2, urea is high, uh, creatinine high, potassium high, sodium, like sodium, potassium, both are high, uh, higher end of normal range. Mm -hmm. uh, platelet, WBC, and hemoglobin are normal. A 46-year-old woman who is bipolar disorder for which she taking regular lithium come to the emergency department with an nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and confusion which was developed over the past three to four days. She was previously well, apart from a recent knee injury from which she bought ibuprofen tablet from the local supermarket. Her blood pressure 90, 60, pulse 90 and regular. She is a drowsy confusion with the glasocoma skill 13. Her abdomen is generally tender, but is soft. Uh, with active bowel sound, you note a a coarse tremor and increased tone and myoclonus jars on neurological examination. So it is a lithium toxicity. Hey. And the level is almost higher level, like 3.2. So we, we have go for the hemodialysis. Yeah, it is a chronic user. Na? So we can yeah. Yeah. Above 2.5, we can go for hemodialysis. In uh, acute poisoning, it is, I think, uh, 3.5, I think. 3.5? Yeah, that is re like a label, label for the uh, hemodialysis. hemodialysis. Mm -hmm. In chronic poisoning, we have to go for early period. But they are saying is the IV normal. Sir. Oh my dear, these are these patient. I think what is the most appropriate next step in, uh, in her treatment? The patient BP is 9060. That's why okay, okay. They, hypertension. Hypertension. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this patient is hypotensive with the evidence of prenatal impairment in contrast to significant lithium overdose, as evidenced by the neurological impairment and the lithium level of 3.2. IV uh, crystalloid is the most important first step in her therapy. She is likely to be both salt and water depletion and restoration of her uh, GFR is the import, uh, will improve lithium 
রেনাল এক্সট্রিয়েশন ওকে আমরা একটুখানি হেমোডায়ালাইসিস টা পড়ে আসি হেমোডায়ালাইসিস হ্যাভ ইনিশিয়াল ইন্টারভেনশন they give different different data at different where mm. i said that uh, it is 2.5 for the chronic and uh, some 3.5 or something raised for the acute one and it is the case of chronic poisoning only <sighs> okay see the four only <laughs> these question the data it is quite confusing one mm-hmm. which of the following is the most appropriate next step i think uh, when any kind of bp 9060 uh, hypovolemic shock i think we should go with this normal saline like right. uh, one question what is the criteria for the marked hypotension do you know hypotension if the blood pressure is uh, low, um, below like 9060 or below this and uh, tachycardy in that case and uh, whenever like 9075 we don't characterize as a hypotension no no i think okay. so i think both of them should be like uh, low uh, systolic uh, 90 uh-huh. and diastolic 60 i guess which of the following is the most appropriate next step uh comments on anti uh, retroviral therapy uh, plural biopsy interferon gamma release testing uh, tb culture tb serum sputum tb nu- nucleic acid amplification test hiv positive check x ray shows uh, left lower loop consolidation and is small uh, left plural effusion uh, tuberculin test negative crp increase creatinine uh, potassium sodium platelet platelet low but uh, wbc and uh, wbc normal hemoglobin is low a 33 year uh, old man is uh, re- reviewing in a respiratory clinic with a chronic cough uh, chronic productive chronic cough sorry chronic cough produ- uh, production of blood stain is put up night sweat weight loss over the past few months he smoked five cigarettes per day and um, intravenous heroin user blood pressure 115 by 75 pulse 80 there is wheeze and decreased breath sound uh, at the left um, base on the auscultation of the chest she has multiple lymph node palpation uh, both axilla and the groin there is obvious uh, track mark both um, cubital fossa body mass index reduced at 20 so we should um, which of the following is the most appropriate comments on antiretroviral plural biopsy we should do actually i think um, sputum or sputum Hmm, oh people. oh yeah 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 because this patient have productive cup so we can go for the sputum hmm. if the dry cup then we have go for levels or something yeah oh no yeah the sputum tb nucleic acid amplification test it ha, I, I give it oh acha sorry i think it was <laughs> hmm. okay. confirm it we should do the confirmatory test in this yeah most appropriate eh? most appropriate next step okay okay just, just read is put on tb nucleic acid amplification test um, naa test is a diagnostic and tb is very important where early diagnosis may significant impact on patient outcome in patient with advanced hiv in here uh, impairment of immune system can result a false negative tuberculin test uh, commencement of antiretroviral therapy for HIV may ac- uh, acutely result in worsening TB symptom. Hence, it is important to confirm patient's TB infection as soon as possible, uh, supporting the use of NAA test. NAA test can also detect uh, reformation resistance guidelines, uh, appropriate anti-TB 
uh, treatment. A standard six month period of uh, TB is recommended for uh, drug for the two months. That is reform patients, isonazid, ethambutol, and pyrazinamide, then isonazid and reform patient for the four months. Mm -hmm. Why not culture? Yeah, yeah. Uh, TB culture um, takes time during uh, during which definitive treatment for both TB and HIV could be in in inside inside gated. For this reason, uh, the cause of resistance issue in this patient uh, with HIV TB NN test is preferred because a NN testa, uh, we can saw uh, like any kind of uh, uh, reform patient resistance present or not. Yes, this is the another point. This is the main uh, point that they are want to indicate. Chetetu balo resistance asik na drug sheeto amad dekha hoy gelo. Ekshathe moche treatment plan o kora gelo. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Acute fatty liver of pregnancy, ascending uh, cholangitis, autoimmune hepatitis, ICP, preeclampsia. Ultrasound, no significant abnormality identified. Bilirubin 28, which is increased. ALP, ALT, both are rise. Uh, creatinine, potassium, sodium, uh, platelet, WBC, hemoglobin, uh, all are normal. Mm. Uh, 28 week uh, pregnant uh, first child come to the emergency department complaining of EG, uh, which is increasing significantly over past few days. She also complained of right upper quadrant pain and nausea. Uh, examination uh, of her abdomen consists with 28 week pregnancy. Uh, she has a scratch mark over the uh, over upper body, body blood pressure is 110 70. No temperature, right? Only upper quadrant pain and yeah. nausea. Uh, so, LP is cholestatic mm. pregnancy, intrahepatic cholestatic only. It's not ascending cholangitis, right? No, no, no it is not no, ascending. No, no. Intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy. Cholestasis. No, I'm thinking about the, there is. Um, Pain, but it is right. mostly in the third trimester. It is uh, 28 weeks. Tw yeah, 28 weeks is the th third trimester. Yeah. yeah. 24 is yeah. third trimester. Intrahepatic cholestasis in pregnancy usually occurs second and third trimester. Yeah. yeah. Acute fatty liver occurs just only third trimester, but here also increased WBC count and patient has fever like yeah. this. It's also increased ALT level. Fever? He has yeah. fever? No, 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 no. No, no. But in case of acute fatty liver, patient mm -hmm. might have fever, raised WBC count, mm -hmm. and raised ALT, especially ALT yeah. raised. Mm -hmm. Just only read acute fatty liver. Okay. Acute fatty liver of a pregnancy is usually seen around 35 weeks of pregnancy, present with a nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, fever, headache, and itchy. Jaundice begin as soon as after the onset of the symptom, and uh, fulminate liver failure may follow. WBC is raised. Transaminase are moderately high. Clotting is usually abnormal. It's one more thing. The clotting factor is abnormal as well. Early, no. early uh, delivery should be considered and as leads to resolution the con condition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our, our favorite ECG. Low voltage ECG. Low voltage ECG. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Which of, uh, which of the following arteries is most likely to be occluded in this patient? Okay, just read the main. Mm. Look at the ECG and the changes. Yeah. Yeah, the elevation or any changes, I think. Uh, I think is I maybe the posterior uh, inferior MI can be no. because let her uh, look one let, ABL, one, one ABL, ABL, and one, one is the T inversion is there. No T inversion so, is there. So it's more uh, lateral. One ABL, one ABL and one T inversion. Uh, ABL. B five, B five six six T inversion as a four five six. Not in uh, not a uh, ST elevation or T depression. So I think it's a lateral lateral. Lateral? Skin. 
isolated lateral mi is unusual but occurs due to occlusion of the first uh, diagonal branch of left anterior descending artery the um, obtuse marginal uh, branch of left circumflex or ramus um, intermedius ami arek bar ektu khane ese ji ta ektu dekhte chaichi amro porte लार्ज सेल कार्सिनोमा ऑफ द ब्रोंकस स्मॉल सेल कार्सि स्मॉल सेल ब्रोंकियल कार्सिनोमा स्क्वामस सेल कार्सिनोमा ऑफ द ब्रोंकस ओके ईएसआर हाई सी रिएक्टिव प्रोटीन इज हाई क्रिएटिन इन नॉर्मल पोटेशियम नॉर्मल सोडियम लो प्लेटिलेट डब्ल्यूबीसी इज हाई द प्लेटिलेट नॉर्मल डब्ल्यूबीसी हाई एंड हीमोग्लोबिन लो ओके A 45-year-old woman in the respiratory <clears throat> clinic having a referral by her general practitioner for recurrent respiratory tract infection and abdominal uh, check, abnormal chest X-ray noted in the recovery period. Uh, here is uh, on the right the side. Right of side, upper lobe. Yeah. Pen coast, right upper lobe. Pen. Is it pen coast? Most likely yeah. pen coast. Yes. Yeah. But pen coast occurs. Uh, Why there is a recurrent infection? Because patient has a uh, cancer. He will not compromise. No, no. In um, case of like in bronchial carcinoid, there is a chance of recurrent infection. Yeah. Just read. Okay. So uh, if patient, if uh, patient has uh, cancer, patient will get get recurrent in, uh, RTI also. Not only bronchial carcinoid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, she is a lifelong non-smoker with a uh, significant medical illness. She report feeling tired and a little under the weather over the past few months. Uh, the recurrent night sweat, cough, and gradual weight loss. Uh, on examination, blood pressure one twenty eight eighty twenty eight by eighty. Pulse is eighty two. Regular BMI is twenty four. Um, and the patient has also. Uh huh. Cavitation or what? Cavitation. 
फिर <laughs> मान <laughs> स्मॉल Small and is common. Thomas. Around the hilum, like this. This is not bronchial carcinoid. Bronchial to one is central. 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 Are bronchial carcinoma patient uh, um, like onic shomai hoche? Hemoptysis patient. Hemoptysis is also an important feature. Hemoptysis. Hemoptysis. Small is common, so hemoptysis is common. Okay. Adenocarcinoma of the bronchus is the most common form of uh, bronchial carcinoma in women. Uh, in frequently seen in never smoker. Uh, in never smokers, uh, it is often seen uh, peripherally, as here the lesion in the right upper lobe, uh, and can present with the episode of a bronchial obstruction leads to frequent episode of pneumonia. Here is the point. One more point. It is. Yeah, the resection may be possible, and uh, uh, PET and CT staging is advised. So main kotha hote je ekhane like non-smoker and periphery are hote due to obstruction causing uh, frequent episode of pneumonia. Don't go with this. It is also present in bronchial uh, carcinoma also. Yeah, so read this one. Obstruction and recurrent infection. Mm-hmm. The bronchial carcin- uh, carcinoid does not present uh, as an isolated peripheral lesion and mm-hmm. associated both hemoptysis and a symptom of uh, bronchial obstruction. In this case, however, the size of this lesion and its irregular margin fit better with the diagnosis of adenocarcinoma rather than carcinoid. Like a ball, mm-hmm. thake ball, yeah. Thai, na? Yeah. Hemoptysis is important. I have just told you. Hemoptysis is very important. Hemoptysis is present in which? In case of bronchial carcinoid. Here, the important it is bronchial adeno and carcinoid. Here is hemoptysis is not there. Okay. Which of the following abnormalities would you accept accept to find in respiratory symptom? alveolar hemorrhage hilar lymphadenopathy pleural effusion uh, ild uh, pulmonary nodules a 51 year old woman is referred to respiratory clinic with worsening shortness of breath and decreased exercise tolerance she has a small joint polyarthritis for the 6 month duration and rheumatoid factor is positive oh. so which ild ILD rheumatoid arthritis ILD is the uh, most common interstitial mm. lung disease lung disease interstitial um ILD is seen across the range of connective tissue disease including rheumatoid arthritis one cohort of australia patient uh, diagnosis with ra less than 2 year progressively shows a prevalence of radiological change consist with ild more than 50% okay 
Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Bechers, um, Bergers, um, Kawasaki, Esli, and Takayasu. Um, ESR44, uh, creatinine increase, potassium normal, sodium normal, platelate normal, WBC normal, hemoglobin low. A 21-year-old man of Japan, a Japanese ethnic uh, origin present in the rheumatology clinic uh, with a three-month history of fatigue, weight loss, and night sweat. She also has multiple joint pain and uh, claudication affecting the left calf of minimal exercise. She reports occasionally hemoptysis and intermittent pleuritic chest pain. Blood pressure 150 to 85 and uh, 15 millimeter of difference of systolic blood pressure between the arms. Common perineal nerve, anterior tibial pulse are absent in the uh, le left leg. Body mass index is 22. It's a Takayasu. Kawasaki. Yes. Kawasaki. Kawasaki. Na. No, no, no. Takayasu. Takayasu. Sorry, Takayasu. 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 Nature of Takayasu. Takayasu. Yeah. Takayasu. Difference. And, and Japanese. Japanese women and shop kitchen shop feature is the icon. Okay, ATA is a rare autoimmune vasculitis a disorder with uh, predominantly affecting women, usually far east ethnic origin. The classical description of a chronic progressive inflammatory occlusion, uh, occlusive disease of aorta and its branches. The inflammation, inflammatory process result in stenosis, occlusion, aneurysm, formation within the vessel's walls. Uh, the hemoptysis, pruritic chest pain, uh, difference of blood pressure, distal occlusion of arterial supply to the left leg, and rise ESR, all fit with this diagnosis. High dose corticosteroid in addition to uh, steroid sparing antibody like azathioprine, methotrexate, cyclophosphamide are the intervention of the choice. <laughs> Oh, Kawasaki disease is also known as mucocutaneous lymph node syndrome. It occurs in children and result in arteritis affecting medium sized artery. Intervenous immunoglobulin is a preferred. Uh, intervention for the children with this condition. Hmm. Immunoglobin data hai. Tana hole hoje aortic aneurysm develop kore. The patient gula. Acha. Jigan theke MIO ho to par. Hmm. MIO na main. Coronary artery ke dhore ta na ita. Hmm. Aiyi bung baat kar de hai aar hoje patient pro to me fever ni aashe. Din theke pas din jor ta ke. Lymphatic nerve thake, are the important strawberry tongue thake. Strawberry tongue thake. Arbita. Ebang palmar and solero kintu hotche gye rash thake. Rash thake. Discomotion rash. Palm sole. The LED. How can I say a mucocutaneous lymph node? Ha, when inside the mouth. Ah, sabki cervical lymphatic nerve thake. I don't know. I didn't get it. I mean, get it. Go. 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 तो एक भालू छोभी दिसे ताना ना ना दिए थे तो ये जे ये छोभी टा देख ये जे ये रोते ये रो लास्ट हैं ये छोभी टा ये कहने शॉप फीचर ही दिए दिए थे हैं आज इतना नॉन एक्सुडेटिव कंजेंटिवाइटिस होय लाल फीवर फॉर फाइव डेज सर्वाइकल लिम्फ नोट थक बे वो ही मनी म्यूकस मेम्ब्रेन को धोरे प्लस लिम्फ नोट के धोरे ये जो नहीं डरना है मी को गेटिनस लिम्फ मी को साइटोसिस मी को साइटोसिस जो मी को साइटोसिस स्किन सोइलिंग और इरेथेमा 
পাম্পস এন্ড সোল করোনারি আর্টারি অ্যানিউরিজম হয় যেটা আপনি বলছেন এটা খুবই হ্যাঁ খুবই ইম্পর্টেন্ট এই জন্যই মেলটি সবার আগে ইমিউনোগ্লোবুলিন দেয় যাতে হচ্ছে করোনারি আর্টারিকে ধরতে না পারে এবং এইগুলো پیشنটকে বলে যে ইকো করে দেখার জন্য যে কি অবস্থা হার্টে ওকে ফলোইনিপ্রিল <laughs> <laughs> ব্লিস্টার ডিপার্টমেন্ট ফর দা রিউ শি ইস ক্যারিং এ পিকচার অন হার ফোন হার ফিফটিন ইয়ার ওল্ড নেফিউ চেস্ট she has unwell uh, upper respiratory tract symptom and developed rash on her on his chest a picture is shown the below i think it's a chicken pox yes, mm. can you age to test korte hobe na you under uh, you understand that an outbreak of a chicken pox uh, he does not remember having had this disease first we have to check যদি না থাকে তখন ট্রিটমেন্ট দিতে হবে Look, I am reading from the past medicine. It is an important one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, tell. We are saying uh, if there is any doubt about the mother previously having chicken pox, maternal blood should be urgently checked for varicella antibody. Yes. Okay. And yes. next, if the pre- uh, pregnant woman less than 20 years gestation is not immune to varicella, she should be given varicella just an immunoglobulin as soon as possible. And uh, uh, and we can wait up to the 10 days post exposure. Mm-hmm. And next option uh, is uh, like if the pregnant woman more than 20 weeks gestation mm-hmm. and is not immune to the varicella, then varicella just a immunoglobulin or antivirals like acyclovir or and valcyclovir should be given uh, days 7 to 14 after exposure. This woman is 28 weeks pregnant, right? Yeah, 28, more than 20 weeks. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we have to give uh, like immunoglobulin, either go for immunoglobulin or antivirals. But antivirals we used to give after 7 to 14 days. We have to wait for the 7 to 14 days. Mm -hmm. Like after 20 weeks, Mm -hmm. the chance of infection is very minimal to the Mm fetus. And with the 30 weeks, it is very much high chances to very tell just a syndrome which is happening to the chair fetal. Go ahead. So what should we do in, in this case? We should in keep... this case, if the patient is having uh, like uh, uh, you know, uh, no, antibody is not present, then we have to give like uh, immunoglobin. And what if it is immunoglobin not available at the center? Mm-hmm. 
they are saying because we have to wait na 7 to 14 days because they are saying like a scarcity of the medicine in the availability availability of the medicine that's why we are waiting for 7 to 14 days okay no. i have to check this one again mm-hmm. yeah i i remember this one uh, if in past medicine the this one and uh, like which one the previous day we are reading for the pid and uh, they change yes. little bit this too yes uh, which of the following is the most likely diagnosis mil alkaldi syndrome primary hyperparathyroidism secondary tertiary and vitamin d dependence rickets uh, calcium is high uh, phosphate is low uh, creatinine normal potassium normal sodium platelet wbc and uh, hemoglobin normal a 74 year old Uh, old woman present to the endocrine clinic with a tired lethargy and low mood over past few months she has hypertension but is otherwise well and uh, no previous uh, psychiatric illness is uh, blood pressure 140 to 84 um, pulse normal body mass index is 24 is secondary right no, no. primary primary no. calcium raised phosphate low Hospital, oh, sorry. Yeah. Calcium is increased. It's the yeah. primary. Sorry, sorry. Primary. And renal function is normal. This yeah. patient doesn't have any significant reduction in glomerular filtration rate as the evidence of creatinine level is here. Does not have significant hypercalcemia or phosphatemia. Uh, the most likely diagnosis uh, therefore is a primary hyperparathyroidism which may be related to the parathyroid hyperplasia or the single adenoma which one is the most common uh, single adenoma or hyperplasia uh, hyperplasia hyperplasia <laughs> okay who uh, which of the following is the most uh, most appropriate uh, next intervention Uh, glycerol uh, suppositories, uh, intermittent uh, phosphate enema use, uh, iscabula husk, lactulose sena. A 34-year old man come to the clinic complaining of uh, persistent uh, constipation despite having reduced uh, intake of caffeine and increased intake of water and dietary fiber. She is 34 week pregnant. Um, she is still open her bowels once uh, every two to three days. which is heart uh, palate stool i think iskabula husk we should give right yeah, first line is iskabula husk then if it will not helping then lactulose we can lactulose yeah and the patient is pregnant mm-hmm. okay yeah iskabula husk ah mer moto sundor Which of the following is the most likely axillary lymph node biopsy? This one. Mm. Mm. Actinomycosis, histoplasmosis, mycobacterium avium, intercellular, non-Hodgkin, and toxoplasmosis. It a question put by when I left. A thirty-four-year-old man who has injected heroin intermittently over the past 10 years present to the emergency department complaining of night sweat weight loss diarrhea multiple swelling lymph node he uh, admit to use a dirty injection technique on uh, many occasion temperature 37 blood pressure 102 by 75 body mass index 21 you note cervical axillary inguinal lymph node are enlarged hemoglobin low uh, wbc low uh, wbc is quite uh, okay normal the platelet low uh, sodium potassium creatinine ast is high and alt is also high so avm i think avm yeah. maybe because you know patient hb patient i think actinomycosis branching pattern is, is these are branching pattern if actinomycosis th- there will be the branching pattern of this and there is some uh, discharge from the nodes also like what is this, this is lymph node biopsy yes so this is not the sinus 
but he no no i am not in the uh, there is any history given like sinus discharge or something nothing nothing in case of tb the liver enzyme sometimes increase yeah. uh, actinobacterium intracellular and they have uh, liver enlargement they can present with liver enlargement lymph mm -hmm. node enlargement okay. disseminated um, um, uh, disseminated mycobacterium avium intracellular is present with fever sweating malaise marked weight loss diarrhea and generalized lymph adenopathy reduced hemoglobin and WBC coupled with uh, low platelet, abnormal liver function, complain, uh, complement the symptom. The lymph node biopsy here reveals multiple acid base, uh, first bacillus consistent with diagnosis. This patient should be screened for HIV infection. Uh, the likely precipitant of this generalized infection are seen here. The treatment both HIV and high, uh, HIV with a heart for <clears throat> MAI with a multiple therapy like a clarithromycin, ethambutyl, and rifabutin. Hmm. Uh, not rifampicin, it is rifabutin. Yes, it is rifabutin, not rifampicin. And I mean, do you say Yeah. Okay. Actinomycosis lead to formation of granulomas with uh, suppuration. Biopsy, uh, gram positive uh, filamentous organism. And mm -hmm. species, uh, species specific antibody stain can be used to confirm the diagnosis. High dose penicillin is the intervention of the choice for the actinomycosis. It feels like a filamental or branching like pattern, actinomycosis. Mm -hmm. Which of the following is the most appropriate in next step? CT, high flow oxygen, uh, endomethacin, MRI brain, somatriptan. Maybe headache patient. A 39 year old woman present to the emergency department complaining of worsening headache uh, she has ever had, which began at the end of, which began at the back of her head involving the neck, reach maximum intensity within minute. She tell you that she was arguing with her partner at that time. She has suffering from the migraine in past. On examination, uh, on the emergency department, blood pressure 170 and 90 pulse 95 regular. She is obviously neck stiffness, photophobia, and you are unable uh, to examine her fundi. Ibuprofen and paracetamol are taken at the home have failed to make uh, an improvement. I think we should go for the CT, right? MRA, MRA. Sorry, sorry, sorry. MRA, MRA. Like a uh, hemorrhage. Uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Sorry. Polycystic kidney disease. Right. Polycystic kidney? No need to do. Uh, how can we say that it is polycystic? No relation. It might be, be any. Subarachnoid hemorrhage, they can uh, increase the pressure. No. Um, Oh, it's CT. CT. Uh, okay, then first, why it is not MRA? MRA brain is usually considered uh, as a follow-up investigation to the CT where this blood is identified on the scan to look for the culpit aneurysm. It is not primary state in the investigation for the thunderclap uh, headache. Mm -hmm. So, at the thunderclap headache, primary Tarjibun Ericum headache soon and I. Most appropriate mm -hmm. next step. This thing, if both are in the question, then it's really tough to like uh, give answer. Say, yeah, give answer. Like which one I have to answer is MRA or CT? Okay, just read the CT. This patient has presented with thundercleft headache for which associated with subarachnoid hemorrhage in up to one in 
10 cases. Uh, as such, subarachnoid hemorrhage must be ruled out uh, urgent uh, with a CT brain as a first step. In the event the show no evidence of hemorrhage, it should be follow a lumbar puncture. Uh, conduct at least 12 hours after the onset of the headache, uh, looking for xanthochromia. Xanthochromia is positive 100% patient at 12 uh, hour post ictus, maximum bilirubin concentration being around two days. Mm. 12 hour for a no. I don't know if you need to What is the most appropriate next management step? BiPAP, IV aminophylline, IV magnesium, oral rofuluminase, IV salbutamol. EFR is 220 and more than 550. And the chest x ray, no evidence of pneumothorax, fatty changes in the right lower lobe. And creatinine is 89, potassium 3.4, sodium platelet, okay. Hemoglobin 13.5, okay. And the uh, Question is, a 27-year-old man who takes the high dose of salmetrol fluticasone combination inhaler for his asthma is admitted to the emergency department with an acute exacerbation. He has been unwell for the past three days uh, with a cough productive of thick yellow sputum, increased the uh, shortness of breath and fever. There is a coarse wheeze on auscultation of the chest. His chest, uh, his blood pressure is 132 by 84 and pulse of 90 and regular. His blood pressure, uh, respiratory rate is 31, oxygen saturation of 92% and uh, uh, as measured by pulse oximetry. Okay, and PEFR is 220 and each uh, okay, down, down, down. With the back to back uh, nebulizers and the each of them is his PFR is just improving. Magnesium. Hmm. Magnesium. But improving, right? Improving, but not much. But not but that much. The, yeah. Sorry, we do the 50%. Mm -hmm. So, magnesium. Yeah. yeah, other things are not given in this condition only. Mm -hmm. Like BiPAP is no role, aminophylline no role, oral roflumilas for COPD. Regular um, others option are more likely with the COPD. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which of the following is the most appropriate long-term intervention? Aloprenol, bench bromarone, colchicine, low-dose prednisolone, naproxen. 57-year-old man comes to the rheumatology clinic for review. He recovered from the acute attack of the gout, which occurred four weeks ago, and required two weeks of treatment with an oral naproxen. He has a hypertension for which he takes the amlodipine 5 mg daily, but is otherwise not well. His blood pressure is 145 by 84, and his pulse is 67 and regular. His body mass index is 28, and his left uh, grade 2 uh, wear he had an episode of gout, now looks normal. Investigation reveals the following, hemoglobin of 13.1 and WBC okay, the platelet normal. Sodium, potassium, creatinine, all good. Mm. Urate level is very high, 595. Yeah. So urate lowering isn't. Yeah, allopurinol. Allopurinol. Okay. What is bent bromaron? One minute. Bench, uh, bench bromarone is a uric acid transporter, urat 1, uh, which increases the excretion of uric acid. It is the intervention of choice for the patient who failed to achieve the uric acid target level on a xanthine oxidase inhibitor such as the allopurinol alone. Urat 1 inhibitors may increase the risk of renal stone and the patient with gout who are prescribed them should be warned about this. Yeah. Which of the following is the most appropriate initial way to treat the hypertension? Amlodipine, bisoprolol, bosantan, ramipril, valsartan. 
43 year old woman who has a systemic sclerosis admitted to the emergency department who with a severe headache nausea and vomiting which have developed over the past three days and she has recently begun uh, to a course of prednisolone 40 milligram daily for a pulmonary fibrosis her blood pressure is 172 by 90 and pulse of 90 and regular bandoscopy reveals uh, grade 3 hypertensive retinopathy and uh, uh, hemoglobin of 11.3 wbc of 10.1 platelet of 229 and sodium of 144 potassium of 4.9 creatinine of 199 so, scleroderma renal crisis. Renal crisis. Yeah. April? Yes, in April. 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 Yes, in no, no, it cannot give steroid. It, it will over the uh, steroid. Oh, yes, 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 yes. That's why I ask. We will give this cyclophosphamide, this thing. Yes, yes. Steroid sparing, therapy, but never give a steroid here. It will uh, worsen the steroid crisis, renal crisis. Mm -hmm. Like, you give a pulmonary hypertension? Eh? Hypertension, no. Nah. Uh, systemic patient, uh, chest complaint. I LD like feature, I'm a fibrosis like feature. So Jacob ILD thumbed up on the steroid. Can they get the other one? You can the steroid is sparing jiggle, cyclophosphamide, or that's a bit negligible. Steroid delay, patient there, a sclonomer renal crisis are a piece of it. So it's no steroid the other one. Okay. 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 Today. Okay. Which of the following is the most appropriate uh, next investigation for this for his hypertension? Uh, USG and uh, CT of the neck, 24 hour HIA and 24 hour urinary catecholamine and serum calcium. Okay. 35 year old man is referred to the endocrinology clinic having presented to the emergency department with a severe headache and tachycardia following rushing to the catch between at the time of his blood pressure was noted to be 165 by 90. He admits to the previous episode of severe headache to at home over the past four months and has a 24 hour ambulatory blood pressure was uh, revealed persistent hypertension. He tells you that his father died, uh, had a cancer of thyroid and problems with the Severe hypertension, but he has refused medical hyper uh, intervention previously. Uh, his blood pressure uh, in the clinic is 140 by 90 and uh, heart uh, has no heart murmur and his chest is clear. Abdomen is soft and non-tender, no mass. Uh, he has a body mass under 23. Hemoglobin of 13.1, WBC 6.7 and platelet sodium potassium all good. And uh, what is the diagnosis? It so is main one. 24 hour. Mm -hmm. yes. Why main one? Main two. Eh? Main two. Main two. Main sorry, main two. Main two. Catacolamine. Yeah. Yes. Pheochromocytoma. Why not uh, we should go for that uh, computer tomography of the neck? Why? No, no. Patients other has cancer. Other not has a thyroid cancer. Yeah. Yeah, then might be it is uh, some autosomal dominant condition only. No, no, they are asking the cause of investigation for hypertension. Yeah, yeah, this is a, okay. Just I'm asking. Okay. 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 So if you are if you are uh, scanning, then you can go for rate oncogene, not scan. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, that rate oncogene we have to scan. Okay. What they are saying, uh, CTA scanning is preferred imaging modality for the pheochromocytoma and. Phenoxybenzamine is the initial uh, antihypertensive medication of choice. Yes. Mm -hmm. CT abdomen. This is not neck. <laughs> I think. Okay. Thank you. Tare rate. One shotto the shotto shesh kore. Okay. Okay. Which of the following is the most appropriate intervention? Uh, Azathioprine, Inflexi, Mycoprednisone, and Arso. Anti-nuclear antibody positive. 
bilirubin is okay on higher side alp raised ast very much raised alt also raised creatinine is 102 and uh, sodium potassium good and rsm normal uh, 46 year old women is referred to hepatology clinic with the gradually worsening fatigue anorexia and weight loss over the past few months her gp has also noted abnormal liver function test he, she drinks very little alcohol and has never used illegal drug Her blood pressure of one twenty two by eighty, and the pulse is eighty and regular. You know the scratch mark on the over the abdomen, upper abdomen, and both arms. And she has a vague tenderness in the right upper quadrant and abdominal palpation. Autoimmune hepatitis. Yeah, autoimmune. Because okay, right. raised ALT ST in thousand, it is mm-hmm. going and anti antibody is present. Is anti oh. yes. so. Yeah. Yes. Prednisolone. 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 This patient is, is symptoms of autoimmune hepatitis and his clinical history of delivered transaminases, uh, accompanied by the smaller raise in alkaline phosphatase and positive anti-nuclear antibody fits well with the diagnosis of autoimmune hepatitis in patients with a very marked elevation in the transaminases as in a uh, higher dose of. Prednisolone, that is 60 milligram per day, are recommended as symptoms improve. It is happening is usually added uh, as a steroid sparing agent. Okay. Thank you. First is a steroid. Right. 60 milligram per day. Yeah, high dose. <laughs> high dose. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Now let's. I'm gonna agar uta diye ek pictorial gulo dekh baar. Acha. Okay. Okay. Lafiz, Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam.